did two seven hour lectures yesterday and today for the trans masters group, so a little bit a little bit frazzled. Um, but I have a kind of a mixed presentation tonight. Um, as Emory mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, back history. A little, I think it's, Emory gave me some good advice once doing, I said, listen, I've got to do this PowerPoint. And I don't remember where I was going. Um, he said, okay, well, never more than, uh, what'd you say, a slide a minute max or something. And then he said, and you got to get some personal history, right? You have to, because he said, it's really important, and, and I agree with him, and now as I've been to sitting through many lectures and having visitors at Art Center, and as I've said, last night listening to Niels, it was very fun um, to listen to some back history. Because he said when you're out, and I've been out now, I hate to say, 20 years as of last week, uh, since I graduated. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's important when you're a young student and a designer and to see the path, because, um, as Emory pointed out, it's, it's, it's hard to make the connection sometimes to uh, how do you end up with, well, actually, the fun story is how do I end up with a wheelchair that I designed as an intern in uh, Avatar? So that's kind of bizarre. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with a little bit of that story. Um, because it, and hopefully what will come through is, is um, where I think I got a lot of interest in education, uh, primarily from my father, and who was also uh, went to art center and was also a teacher, um, but also my love of cars. So I was technically mostly a transportation major. I did sort of double up. Uh, my last year was mostly independent studies, so it's kind of a weird way to work for art center. But so that's me on the far side, far lane one there, in the wacky looking car. Um, so it kind of started at you know age 14, 15 with Soapbox Derby. So that was in Akron, Ohio, 1981, um, and uh, I finished. I think I was six that year. Um, anyway, that was a lot of fun, and that started, I think I had 500 hours in that car. So at 14 years old, um, 500 hours, and I built five cars in total. Um, they're all hand-built, and, and um, it was fun. We had Boeing engineer friends and that sort of thing. So um, we had all this. Uh, 14 years old, and I was reading through, like, uh, you know, airfoil cross-section data about where to place the strips of tape on the back, you know, tapering edge of my car to try and pull the laminar flow back together. And I had no idea what any of that meant. Um, it just meant I could go faster, right, and get a bigger trophy. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And that sort of formed what I, you know, my love for cars. Another thing I did when I was a kid, uh, we built lots of houses. Um, so this is one of my family's homes. Uh, we built this one summer, my dad and my brother and I. Uh, and my dad was an illustrator. Sorry, I can't. Uh, I can't look at that that much. So, uh, uh, this is a bike I did, uh, fifth term. Sorry. Uh, no, I lost my dad a while ago, so I haven't seen the piece. Uh, this is a bike I did, uh, fifth term full-scale model, um, and this really led to my ability to get an internship at Kestrel. Um, and the bike was made all out of wood with foam on each side, and you can see like the sagging frame shows how weak the model is, right? So the, the model was just strong enough to hold that derailleur, right? And I didn't want to bump it, so you, know, you couldn't tighten up the chain, otherwise the thing was snapped in half. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was fun uh, to build something full-size. Uh, the wheels were all made out of foam. Um, I think I just had a thin coat of resin on, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And I think actually I sold that bike, and this maybe is where the start of the entrepreneurial thing comes from. I sold this bike to a roofing company in Belgium, which seems really odd, <laughs> right? To put in their lobby, with the exception of right, if you have a cool bike and you're in Europe, and especially if you're in Belgium, you're really hip, right? So. I guess their thinking was to draw people in to buy roofing. They put a bike in their lobby, right? But I was happy to sell it, paid for a term of art center. Um, don't worry, it was a lot cheaper. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> it was not what it is today, so it's not that impressive. So anyway, that led to going on, and uh, I did two internships during art center. I did one at Hauser um, uh, and Associates, I think. Steve Hauser had a consultancy, and that was really to learn the business of consultancy. I really was, to be honest, not interested in the products they did, because they had lots of medical products, and I was not, it was not what I was passionate about. And, um, but there was a good consultancy, and I wanted to learn the business. So 
time cards, project management, um, structuring things in phases, uh, how do you get a client to sign on through different gates to allow you to go build a model, um, that sort of thing. With an eye towards thinking, you know, I think I should just uh, start a consultancy after school. So there's the wheelchair, actually. So if that looks familiar, um, that's because it was an avatar, if you saw that. Um, so the story is it's slightly different. This is one had a, this had a folding and a hinged front end. Um, the other one was the fixed one. Anyway, the story on that, Neville uh, was lead character, uh, lead creature designer and avatar. And Jim wanted a wheelchair, we know a lot about wheelchairs, so he took one of our wheelchairs we still had in the studio and took it to the set one day. Jim loved it and said, okay, we'll just make a mold of that and it's in the movie. Is that simple that was bizarre. And so it's very odd that like such a big budget movie has a wheelchair that was designed uh, by a 22 year old 22 years ago. So um, yeah, stranger things, I guess, do happen. Uh, but anyway, I spent a lot of time doing um, wheelchairs and uh, have like 24 utility patents in the durable medical goods industry. And I did that for about five years. And that was a lot of fun. We worked with some really incredible um, sort of ex Lockheed uh, aerospace engineers. So this really helped inform my engineering ability and gave me a very good sort of, you know, rule of thumb uh, engineering insight into, you know, what could work, what couldn't work, load paths, all the testing we did on these things. So this was the most advanced chair, titanium upper, honeycomb seat panels. Uh, Kevlar and carbon main tubes, uh, shock absorber at the back, the seat pan was hinged, uh, had adjustable back. Now to make things worse with these chairs, you had to make them in 20 different sizes. So this is the most attractive plumbing that I've ever done because you had to design it, it was it offered in like four widths, three depths, I don't know, three or four heights. It was a sort of ridiculous matrix and combination. And so uh, I've learned a lot on how to, you know, design attractive functional things that, you know, ideally were as streamlined and minimal as possible, mostly for weight. Back to bicycles. This was a bike I did, uh, I think, right after graduation. I did one bike during school that was in production, which was the KM40, and then this was the next. I did also the CSX. This was maybe the third bike maybe a year after graduation. Uh, I did all total for industrial, maybe, I don't know, six or eight or more frames. And I used to also build the master patterns. So um, I used to get in there and I would always make a model. Um, this was an iteration later of the KM40. Um, and now there's a KM40 airfoil that came after this. So there's actually been three iterations of that bike. Um, so that takes me back to like 95. So that's like the first five years. So you see pretty like, you know, it's expected, regular, sort of product design things. But always product design with uh, an eye towards some styling. So even the wheelchair had a bit more sort of trans influence. And then Emory, as he mentioned, invited me to come teach, uh, and myself and Neville. And it was, you know, this actually was the, at a point when we had sold the, our studio, we were sort of more absorbed by the wheelchair company because they needed more of our time. So we signed up to work there four days a week. The fifth day being that we could use all the equipment we sold to them for outside freelance work. So on Fridays and weekends, we would have full access to our shop still, um, but we promised to work for them Monday through Thursday. Um, I lasted about eight months in that job, um, and that's the only full-time job I've had in 20 years. So um, it's a little bit odd, I think. And I've always chosen freedom over money, actually, uh, and really enjoyed having multiple jobs simultaneously. And so that brought on Art Center Europe. Uh, Imre had come down back to the States for a visit, had said, hey, well, you know, if we could really use some help on the discount side. And I hadn't been, gotten married by that time, neither had Neville, so we built renting places, hadn't bought homes, so it was a good time. Neither of us wanted to be at the wheelchair company anymore. We said, all right, let's get out of here. So we put it all in storage, jumped on an airplane, uh, landed in Vivay, Switzerland. And this was the view from the apartments that we rented, um, which was pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> and uh, we actually wouldn't have left had it still not closed, probably. So who knows what the path would have been. Had Art Center stayed there, there would probably be no educational DVDs, no design studio press, no entertainment design at Art Center here, or here. So a lot of things could be different. Uh, anyway, 
it was an amazing experience. There's the student body of Art Center Europe.